the name of Lots. General Lots. Good day, ladies and gentlemen. The Nintendo 64 was the greatest gaming console ever devised in the late 90s. It featured some of the most amazing games ever even conceived. And one such game was GoldenEye 007. It is said that great claims require great evidence, and today I shall prove why GoldenEye 007 is one of the holy relics of first-person shooting. It is a game so great that it transcends the era in which it was created. GoldenEye 007 was developed by the mighty and legendary Rare Software and published by a little-known gaming company called Nintendo way back in 1997. First in Japan on 23rd August, then on 25th August in the United States. And then, weirdly enough, 7th November for the UK. The very country that spawned the very concept of James Bond got the game last. For shame, Nintendo. I guess Nintendo was still pissed off that Bond blew up their volcano in the 60s. GoldenEye 007 is a first-person objective-based shooter. Rare Software was one of those rare companies that earned their name. Rare Software in the 90s did not just make the same old crap as everyone else and call it a day. Instead, they were always pushing the boundaries of what was possible. The Nintendo 64 was a cartridge-based console, but was remarkably powerful when compared to other systems at the time, and Rare took great advantage of this to deliver a game that featured both complex graphics and gameplay. Remember, the first-person shooter had only been truly codified back in 1993, and by 1997, we had this game. First, we got the difficulty settings. You have Agent, Secret Agent, and finally, 007 Agent. Rare was known from its inception as being a bunch of gaming ball busters, and this game is no exception. Agent might be the easiest difficulty, but it's roughly analogous to hard in other games. The difficulty spike between Agent and Secret Agent is considerable, and Double O Agent is like ramming a brick wall with your head. The difficulties will fundamentally change how the game is played. As you go up in difficulty, ammo drops decrease, enemy AI increases, as does enemy spawn count. Auto turrets will start showing up in rather annoying places. The number and complexity of objectives will increase as well. GoldenEye 007 is a pretty fast paced game and is divided into a series of levels that can be completed in minutes. If you are good and due to their small size, you do not get intro level checkpoints. So these missions can become really difficult. On top of all this, you can fail objectives and the enemy can make you fail objectives as well. On higher difficulties, the enemy can chuck grenades. Yeah, in 97 on a console, the enemy were smart enough to show up with a sack of hand grenades. And due to this, they can destroy interactive objects and cause you to lose the mission. And you can get two seconds from the exit, only to lose because some square-shaped bastard chucked a grenade at something you needed to click. This makes the game on higher difficulties a pretty tense affair worthy of the name Bond. This game was played with the excellent N64 controller, and the N64 controller only features featured a single analog stick. Some games got around this single analog stick by using the yellow C buttons on the right hand side as an unofficial second stick. But GoldenEye just used the one and allowed for precision aiming by mapping a crosshair to a button. This works pretty well, but has a bit of a learning curve. On Agent, the auto aim is great and makes the game pretty fast paced. But as you go up in difficulty, the auto aim gets less and less until you reach double O agent where it is pretty much gone entirely, meaning the game becomes a good bit slower and more methodical as you have to aim to hit the enemies that are now more numerous and more intelligent. This wouldn't be rare if they didn't add more difficulty on top of that. Now, some missions will give you a time limit, so you gotta be fast and accurate to survive. Now, hopefully, you can start to see why this is such a well-regarded game. There was that much effort put into just the bloody difficulty settings. As for the actual shooting, it's amazing. Each level will start you with a basic weapon, and most of the time it will be the classic Valther PPK, or as this game has to call it due to rights issues, the PP7. But quickly you will start to gather more powerful weapons, and since this is a game from the 90s, you can carry them all at once, but many will share ammo pools. My personal favorite weapon in the game is the PP7 itself. On sane difficulties, it can kill regular enemies pretty efficiently. Then there is the MP5, aka the Deutsch, and it's a pretty stompy weapon, and in a bonus level, you can get a laser from the epic Bond movie Moonraker, and it stomps too, and can actually go all the way through an enemy. 
This game features the greatest inventory system of all time. You get the Q watch. This codified the Bond watch as the greatest piece of technology of all time. And man, times move fast because smartwatches exist and have existed for years. See, in 97, the idea of a smartwatch that was worth a damn was literally sci-fi. So the idea of using a watch with like a TV screen in it was amazing to young General Watson. Hell, even adult General Watts was amazed by it. Now, smartwatches can be had for 80 bucks off of AliExpress, but man, back in the 90s, it was the neatest concept ever. The watch has its own theme song, and it's used to select gadgets and check your health and armor. Health in this game is non-regenerative, but since this game features short levels, and is made by Rare, there are no health pickups in the levels. You can get ballistic vests on lower difficulties, but on 00 Agent, good luck! There is no jumping, and crouching is done automatically in a few places. The objectives on on offer in GoldenEye 007 are very well designed. You have to use gadgets to complete certain objectives, such as taking pictures or using a covert modem to snoop on the enemy's hentai habits. You also have to escort and defend NPCs. Now, these guys are pretty thick, and you can lose the mission because they ran right in front of your shots. Natalia is the sexiest Bond girl ever, but really needs a crash course in not being a blundering moron. Oh, these objectives really make this game stand out, and it not only makes you feel like Bond himself, but it also gives you something else to focus on when trying to fight all the bastards. In a couple of levels, you can hop into a T-72 tank and wreck shit up, and you can thankfully blow shit up with its massive tank cannon. Ooh, gotta love that autoloader. The controls are excellent, and the missions are sadly far too brief. Playing a game like this today with modern graphics would blow people's mind with how fun the shooting and objectives were. In the 90s, this was beyond next level. Remember, all this gameplay greatness was less than 10 years after Wolfenstein 3D. If you happen to be a Ute or a Moon Man for the future, give this game a try, and you will not be disappointed. Now, instead of playing it on an almost 30-year-old console, there are a few PC solutions for playing Golden I-007. You have the RetroArch emulator, and it emulates the game pretty well, but you have the much better emulator known as Project 1964. Not only does it clean up the game even more than RetroArch does, but it also allows you to use the keyboard and mouse. Yes, it has a mouse injector, and this enables a much easier mouse aiming option, and it's my preferred way to play the game. Yes, the game is still going to be ball crushingly hard, but now it's just iron crushing instead of lead. Now, if you are on a modern console, you have a few choices. It's on Switch and Xbox One and X slash S. Lastly, if you want to play the game with a little better graphics, you have GoldenEye Remastered. Oh, rights issues strike again. In the 2010s, there was an attempt to create a remaster for the game to be released on Xbox Live. Unfortunately, due to licensing issues between Nintendo and Microsoft, this never saw the light of day. But the greatest hero in American history leaked the beta a few years ago, and now you can play the excellence of GoldenEye with modern graphics, or at least circa 2010s modern graphics. You can play this with the Xenia emulator. A quick Google search will find all that you need. The original gameplay is fully intact, as this was done in a manner similar to Halo Combat Evolved Anniversary. It's just the original game, but you have the skin of new graphics laid atop it. In fact, like Halo Combat Evolved Anniversary, you can toggle back and forth between the new graphics and the old. This can be played with an Xbox 360 controller or mouse injector. The original GoldenEye was a major leap in graphical technology. The textures were amazing. No longer did you have to use your imagination to make stuff look real. Now, things actually did look pretty well real. The 3D models for the people are the crappiest graphics in the game and have aged horribly. But well, for 3D models, they look a damn sight better than Quake. But seriously though, in the 90s, this was a graphical masterpiece and it truly felt like you were in the world of 007. Sound was even better than the graphics. There is no VA work in the game, but the guns and sound effects are nothing short of exceptional. Even though the shotty gun only appears in a single level, it sounds plenty powerful, and all the sound effects would become as iconic as the game itself. Grant Kirkhope, Green Norgate, and Robin, I don't want to be trapped in an elevator with you, Beanland. Compose the music for this game, and this is one of the greatest FPS soundtracks of the 90s. The N64 rendition of the classic Monty Norman theme is a thing of rockin' beauty, and all the rest of the tracks fit their respective levels like a bloody glove. In each track, there are little homages to past Bond movie soundtracks, such as the motif for Goldfinger showing up from time to time. 
Multiplayer was one of the major reasons why this game went from Masterpiece to Holy Relic. For me, I was all about the single player in the 90s and today, but I must salute the greatness of the GoldenEye multiplayer. Four player split screen, awesome weapons, and a bunch of playable characters to choose from. This was and still is the ultimate in pick up and play, and has managed to still be relevant in the space future of 2024. Somehow, despite never leaving consoles, GoldenEye has spawned a dedicated modding community. However, I must say I lack experience with the GoldenEye mods as I've not had a chance to play any of them at this point. However, I do want to mention some that I have seen here and there. First, you've got Goldfinger64, and it's exactly what it sounds like. It's a total conversion that turns GoldenEye into Goldfinger. You've got new weapons, new enemies, and new levels, and apparently it is playable on the original N64 hardware. Then you have GoldenEye X, and this is a gameplay enhancement mod that brings in all the gameplay elements from from Perfect Dark. At some point in the future, I will delve into these mods and give my thoughts on them. Cheat codes, ladies and gentlemen, were part and parcel of games in the 90s, and GoldenEye 007 was no exception. There are exceptional codes, and you unlock them by playing the game, or just by putting in a code to unlock all the cheats. You had big head mode, all guns, and hell, you could even fire off a tank cannon if you cheated it in. Since I was less mature in those days, I used to think that Bond shot it out of his dick for some reason. For some of the harder levels, I just turned on invincibility after I had been mulched one too many times. Story for the game is not the same as the movie it's based upon. It might look similar, but literally everything is different. I guess you could consider this a sort of ultimate universe version of the GoldenEye story, because while many of the same elements from the movie show up, the context in the game is completely different from the context in the movie. Story is told in text briefings at the start of each mission and in intro-level meetups with characters, and in those meetups, dialogue is through text only. There are a few cutscenes, but they are brief and do not really contribute that much to the story. The text briefings feature several characters, M, Bond's boss, Q, the armorer, who in the films up until his death in the late 90s was played by Desmond Llewellyn, and one of my favorite Bond characters of all time, and finally you've got Moneypenny, the snarky secretary who, like in the movies, gives you a quick bit of sarcasm before each mission. The game features 18 missions, plus two unlockable bonus missions. Funny enough, those unlockable missions are tied to two Roger Moore-era films, Moonraker and Live and Let Die, and a weapon appears from the film The Man with the Golden Gun, and you can probably guess what weapon that is. Each level is pretty varied, and and they're not just the same couple hallways repeated. However, despite saying that, there are a couple of repeated levels, but thankfully these levels will have some internal variation and the objectives will be different. The worst mission by far is the statue level. While I do love seeing all the socialist statues getting junked, the level is just boring as hell with bad music and I never really came back to it until I had to do it for this video. So, the story starts up much like the movie. Bond has to infiltrate a chemical bottling plant by inserting via bungee jump. Funny enough, you don't see the bungee cord due to graphics limitations. You then gotta fight through the facility and meet up with Sean Bean, aka Alec Trevelyan, Bond's super bestest friend that never showed up until this movie slash game. As you would expect, he buys it, and then you have to escape. In the film and the game, the events at the dam and the plant take place in the past. Well, these next couple of missions also take place in the past and have Bond traveling to the facility at Servernaya in Russia, which Bond never did at any time in the movie. This ties Bond directly to the GoldenEye weapon. So in the movie, GoldenEye is a space-based weapon that has the ability to shoot off EMP blasts. Bond doesn't learn about it until later in the movie and never had any interaction with it in the past. Bond then goes into the Servernaya bunker and makes a copy of the GoldenEye activation key and even gets some snaps of the control room. I used to love blowing all this up as a kid. In the bunker mission, you meet Boris, a side character and minor villain, and you get him to disable the computer security. This of course never happened in the movie. The silo level is where we finally catch up with the present and is another major departure from the film. This mission has you investigating unscheduled missile launches that could hold GoldenEye weapon satellites. There was only one in the movie, and it was launched by the Soviet Union. You blow up the facility, and then we kinda catch up with the movie. You have to infiltrate a French ship, and man, this mission was one of my favorites as a kid. You gotta save hostages and disarm bombs. Only problem is, this never happened in the movie. In the movie, Bond learns that a new helo is going to be stolen and tries to stop the theft, but the ship was never taken over. Bond then heads back to Servernaya, 
Remember, Bond never shows up there once in the film. And this time around, you get captured. You then end up back in the Servanaya bunker, but this time you meet up with Natalia. This movie slash games, Bond Girl, and the sexiest of them all. Not only is she a ginger, but she is also a computer programmer and keeps up with Bond the entire time and never just gives it up to him. In the movie, they met later, and in the movie, Natalia was the one in Servanaya, and she was a programmer on the GoldenEye project. Servanaya in the movie gets attacked by side villain General Uramov and Bond film fatale Zina Anatop, played by Jean Grey herself, Famica Jansen, aka one of the hottest babes ever. The gruesome twosome steal the golden eye key and kill the staff and then hit the facility with the golden eye EMP. In the game, Natalia is under arrest and is in prison with Bond. This level has the best money penny snark. Grabbed by the Spetsnaz. Sounds painful. They break out and then the facility gets blasted by the golden eye satellite. After Bond and Natalia meet up, they are together for the rest of the film, but in the game, she heads to St. Petersburg and gets nabbed by the villain of the game. It is in the level statues that you learn that Sean Bean is the villain of the game, and this is similar to what happens in the movie. It is in this statue area where Bond learns that Alec Trevelyan is the head of Janus. This is also the part of the movie where Bond would first meet Natalia. Essentially, Alec Trevelyan would knock out, as you would expect, Bond, and he puts him in the Eurocopter that was seen earlier in the movie slash game and that's also where Natalia is and they have to escape the helicopter before it gets blown up by its own missiles. In the game, Natalia and Bond are outside of the helicopter and the helicopter still gets blown up and one of the mission objectives is to find the black box. The next four missions are kind of similar to the movie but are very different in terms of context. In the movie, after escaping the Eurocopter, Bond and Babe immediately get picked up by Russian troops and taken to the Lubyanka for questioning. Bond escapes after General Oromov kills a guy named Defense Minister Mishkin, and this was done because he wanted to frame Bond for that death. In the game, you start up with Bond in the Lubyanka, and you had to fight to get to Natalia, and then you meet Mishkin. Also, you can find execution posts in the basement? As a kid, I thought it was a target range. How innocent. Because also in those days, I was pretty innocent and thought that Bond married the girl at the end of each movie, and each successive movie was in its own new continuity. But whatever, I was a kid. Similar to the movie, Natalia gets kidnapped by General Oromov, and you have to give chase in the T-72 tank and race around the city, blowing up everything in sight. This is the most impressive level in the game. In the movie, Natalia is taken to Trevelyan's armored train, and Bond blows up the locomotive and then boards the train to save her. In the game, you fight through a train depot and then board the train and fight through it. Like in the movie, you get trapped on the train and have to burn your way out with the watch laser. AliExpress ain't got that yet. The watch laser was not introduced in this movie or game. Instead, the watch laser was first introduced in the unofficial Bond film, Never Say Never Again, which was Sean Connery's last outing as the character. The jungle mission is somewhat similar to the film. Bond learns that the Janus base is in Cuba, and he sets out with Natalia to stop them. You get shot down, but get up again, and then have a showdown with Jean Grey. In the film, she gets crushed against a tree in a really weird death, but in the game, you just blast her. The last missions of the game go off the rails yet again. You have to stop the satellite from firing by defending Natalia, but then you have to raise the satellite dish that is used to communicate with the golden eye weapon, which didn't happen in the film because the villain did that in the first place. And finally, you take down Alec himself, and that is similar to the film, but in the movie, all Bond had to do was literally throw a spanner into the works, and Alec had no other guards to fight. In the end, Bond defeats the bastard, and the world is safe once again. There have been a few attempts at remaking GoldenEye, but they've all missed a lot of the charm of this game. You had one on the Wii and one on the Xbox 360. The Wii was pretty good even if it did replace Brosnan with, uh, Daniel Craig, and it played pretty well with the Wii motion controls. The 361 was a COD clone with all that entails. GoldenEye 007 was my first ever encounter with the character of James Bond. Upon playing the game, I was hooked, and the first James Bond movie I would see would be GoldenEye, and it's my favorite James Bond film of all time, and that's not just due to nostalgia. I feel that this film was the best due to the pacing, the story, the music, and the casting of Brosnan. He was more approachable than other actors, and felt more like a true hero. P. 
Pierce Brosnan brought a level of class that was second to none, and in 2024 is my favorite Bond, even if this is the only Brosnan Bond movie that I actually like. After watching GoldenEye, I would see Dr. No, and I was blown away by Sean Connery as a kid, as he was the Prince of Cool, and second only to Hand the Man Solo. As a kid, I loved all his movies and watched them on TV back to back when they would show up as reruns. As an adult, I find most of Connery's films to be a bit dull, and I find Thunderball to be the worst he ever did, as it not only looks a bit crap, the underwater segments put me to sleep. Later, I would watch some Roger Moore films, and I felt that they were alright, but really fell in love with Moonraker as it put Bond in a sci-fi setting and allowed him to start blasting bastards with a 40 gigawatt laser, and is my second favorite Bond film after Goldeneye. It's thanks to this game that I was such a huge fan of James Bond, that for my very last Halloween, I cosplayed as the Sean Connery version of 007. I had my hat, and me and my grandfather made a wooden mock-up of a Beretta Tomcat. Well, at a trick or treating event, someone came up and asked me, are you supposed to be a businessman? And I responded with, no, I'm Bond. James Bond. Growing up, my family was awesome, and they never resorted to anything as base as corporal punishment. Oh no, they were much too intelligent for that. You see, one day, a young General Lutz was, shall we say, mischievous, and I was grounded for my misdeeds. I was not grounded from the entire N64 library. Oh no, they knew which game to ground me from. <sighs> I credit my grounding from being able to play GoldenEye 007 with my spotless record that has extended all the way to age 35. So don't you be naughty, ladies and gentlemen, and if it's been 20 years since you've played GoldenEye 007, it's time to download the Project 1964 emulator and get to playing. I am General Lotz, wishing you good, the world is not enough, and good, everything or nothing, whatever makes you happy. If you enjoyed this video, please consider subscribing, and please consider leaving a like or a comment, as the algorithm desires your soul. And I want to thank all those fans who have supported this channel, both past and present.